So you're thinking of moving to Salem, Oregon and your budget is around $400,000? Well, you're in the right spot because in today's vlog, we're gonna be looking at homes in that price range. Let's get right to it. Hi and welcome to the channel. My name is Ryan Welty and I'm a real estate agent with Windermere Pacific West Properties here in Salem, Oregon. If you're new to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living here in Salem, Oregon, consider subscribing. That way you will be notified whenever I release new content. You can stay up to date on all things Salem, Oregon. Again, my name is Ryan and I love working with people just like you who are thinking of moving here to the Willamette Valley. So whether you're thinking of moving in 10 days or 100 days, feel free to give me a call, text, or email. I'd be happy to help you make a smooth move here to Salem, Oregon. Like I mentioned in the intro earlier, we are looking at a few houses today and the $400,000 price point. So we'll be starting there and we'll be going up to like around 460. Here I am in beautiful Bush Park and I am just a few blocks away from the first home we're looking at. Last month in April of 2023, the average sales price of a home in Salem was $406,000. For the past few years, we've been fluctuating between $425,000 and $400,000. So it's a little bit lower. It just was kind of an off month, I guess. It'll likely go up a little bit this summer, but that's one of the reasons I want to start touring you guys at this price point. Our average sales price was $406,000, while the average price per square foot is $265,000. If you use those two numbers, it gets you about a 1,500 square foot house, give or take a few hundred square feet. And of course, depending on your budget and depending on what you're wanting, you can get a little bit more of a house for that budget if you're looking for a house that you're gonna fix up a little bit more or needs some updating. But if you want a house that is in perfect condition, doesn't need any updating, um, then you're probably gonna get a little smaller house or end up spending a little bit more money than that $400,000 for that 1,500 square foot house. So that's enough for the intro. Let's get over to that first house and take a look. Okay, here we are coming up on our first house of the day. And like I said, we are just a few blocks from Bush Park, about a five to 10 minutes walk, depending on how fast of a walker you are. And in this older neighborhood, you're gonna find a lot of people out here walking on the streets at all hours of the day. It doesn't matter if it's during the work day, there are definitely gonna be quite a few people out here um, walking around and it's a very active community we are in. So the house we are first looking at here is the one right here behind me, as you can probably tell. And this house is listed at $399,900 or $400,000 as we all know it really is. This house has three bedrooms, one and a half baths. There are 1,378 square feet in this house, bringing the price per square foot to 290, which puts it a little higher than the average price per square foot here in Salem, Oregon. But again, it is in one of these neighborhoods that is fairly desirable to a lot of people. So a little bit more about this neighborhood. You are going to find a lot of older homes in the neighborhood. As you can tell, this one right here is not just your standard uh, cookie cutter house. Um, they have a little bit of architecture to them. The houses next to it, they do look kind of similar. They're probably all built around the same time, but they're not your new construction square house builds. They have a lot of character to them. The neighborhoods over here as you can tell some brick houses which isn't very common for here in salem it's not necessary to have the brick we don't have quite as many termites or insects like that that require them this house again was built in 1926 which is not out of place for the neighborhood you can find houses over 100 years old easily in this neighborhood this one's getting pretty close to it and you find a lot of houses that are actually on the historical register some people don't like that. Some people don't want to have their house on the register because it comes with a few issues on repairing and replacing things. But some people love having that history and that written record with their house. So it all depends on what you want with this house. But inside, you're going to find a lot of built-ins. Every nook and cranny has storage in it and is a very unique house. There's a basement down below, which is a nice feature that you don't get in a lot of houses these days. And you can see there's a window right there, so it has a second story. Kind of has that vaulted bedroom up there in the attic space. They really maximized the square footage you got out of the home back then. Okay, so I think that is a good wrap up for this house right here. I'll drive through the neighborhood and show you some of the neighboring houses, and then we'll get on to the next one.
and here we are at the next house. Now we are actually not in Salem anymore. We are just north of it in the city of Kaiser. Now, if you're not familiar with the area, these two cities at one point were probably distinct from each other, but now they have just merged and there's no really distinct line here on the ground. I'm sure you can find it on a map, but as you're driving, you don't really notice going from Salem to Kaiser. So they have become one continuous area here. There are some benefits of living in Kaiser, a uh, little bit lower property taxes. And from some builder friends of mine, I've heard it's a lot easier to get additions done, a little easier to get permits go through, and they're a little more easy to work with than the city of Salem. If you're looking for more information on Kaiser, I will be doing a video touring Kaiser a little bit more in depth, so look out for that. It's not out yet, but when it is, I'll link a card here above if you're watching this in the future. This house right here is listed at $440,000. It is a three bedroom, two bath. It might technically be considered just a two bedroom, two bath, but it has a second living space that they've kind of converted into a bedroom. You could definitely use it as a three, two or convert it back to a two, two with those two living spaces. And it has 1,547 square feet. And on this house, the price per square foot is $284 per square foot. Now this home again is an older house built in 1951. So you're gonna get a little bit of character, which is probably why they had those two living spaces built in there. Uh, the property itself is very nice, uh, very well manicured. You have quite a bit of land with this property. It is a true quarter acre lot. And so a lot of that grass is out here in the front. The backyard isn't too big, but it is still a nice area. Again, this nice neighborhood not very much traffic on this street. Here, I'll pan you around this way too. Not very much traffic. It really is just a nice quiet neighborhood here in Kaiser. This is actually the last street before you get to the Lamont River. I'll show some footage of that here pretty quick. Well, that wraps up what I wanna talk about here in this house in Kaiser. So let's get on to the next one. Okay, here we are at the last house for the video and we are starting out inside because there are some kids playing outside and I wanted to leave them alone. But we are over here in East Salem. We are just a little ways off of Lancaster and Center Street and we are in this beautifully remodeled home. So this is a fully remodeled home. It was built in 1957, but they have done a lot of work to it in the last year or two. And it looks beautiful, very modern. This house is currently listed for $455,000. It is a four bedroom, two bath house, and it is right at 1,694 square feet. The price per square foot on this house is $268 per square foot. Now I'll just take you on a quick tour around. Um, of course, I'm right here by the entryway, uh, open concept to the kitchen with a nice island on it. Again, nicely updated, very modern. Your gray walls, white trim, white ceiling, uh, the, the newer flooring has the quartz countertops and the newer appliances. And over here on the north side of the house, you have a very nice bathroom with, um, <laughs> with this cool mirror, which is an electric mirror, has that light and it has a heater in it so it doesn't get fogged up when you're taking a shower and a nicely redone shower. Very nice, modern, updated bathroom. As you go into the bedrooms, there are nothing too exciting, just your square bedrooms. Uh, very clean, nice big windows. On the other side of the kitchen, you have your laundry room, which also has a door to the back steps, the backyard. And then over here, it's kind of a weird split level where you go up to the master bedroom. Over here, you go down a few steps and there is your water heater and another larger bedroom. This is one of the larger bedrooms in the house. And again, it looks nice. Okay, then up here at the top of the stairs, you have the primary bedroom and it has a nice view of the street through that window. It has a kind of a small closet, but over here, as you can tell, it has a barn door that leads to your in-suite bathroom, which is a very modern bathroom. Um, not huge, but it does have, of course, toilet in here. And it has a double vanity sinks. It has, again, the electric mirror with the lights on it. So you can turn those on and off and it has the heater in it and then you have the 
a tile with a glass door shower. And they also put LEDs in that little light in there. And I'm sure you can control those so they're not blinking, but I don't know how to do it. So that is a tour of this house. Okay, here we are just walking down the street. The house we were just in is right there at the end of the street down there. It was a little noisy and the neighbor was out using his vacuum. So I decided just to walk down here and show you a little bit more of the neighborhood. And the house we were just in was only two houses off of a pretty busy road. So you're gonna get a lot of traffic. The side street doesn't have too many houses on it. So it is fairly quiet. As you can tell, there's no one driving by and the farther you get off of those main roads, the quieter you're going to be. So it all just depends on what matters to you and whether or not uh, the road noise really makes any difference for you. Well, we're going to wrap up this video here. If you're interested in moving to Salem and you want to learn more about the area, feel free to watch one of my other videos or you can reach out to me directly. I'd be happy to chat with you about the different areas in town and whether or not moving to Salem is right for you. Mm -hmm.